Hi, Sportster Paul here. We're working on this Iron Sportster in 1982, towards the end of the Iron Sportster era. We're going to take the primary cover off. We've gotten the top end off. We've got this stuff off. I'm working on this side. It felt weird working over there away from the toolbox because I like showing how you work out of the box. First thing, a three-fourths inch wrench. I think this is empty because half of these screws are missing, which we'll note, but there's a uh, three-quarter inch if I can find it. There it is. And righty tighty, lefty loosey, there it is. I uh, drilled one of these, I think on my old 62, and uh, actually put a wire, uh, like a safety wire, just so it wouldn't fall out. But uh, my everyday driver. Of course, it tightens. As soon as I put the wrench away, it tightens up. Here we go. I'm pretty sure this is dry. But in addition to this uh, pan, you can see on the side cam here, I've got a water heater pan that I decided I don't want it. I'm working in the living room. And then I got this little tray in case there is any oil in here. But since we, we tried to rock the motor by turning the, putting it in gear and turning the crank or turning the uh, transmission shaft and nothing happened here, I'm pretty sure the clutch is missing. It may be over here on a, a setup. Okay, so nothing. And like before, we've got our nice bin to put all the parts so they don't get scattered all over the shop and lost because that's a common thing. Uh, this. Something's wrong with this peg. You see it from over here. Maybe the, uh, does the sky cam work? Yeah, you can see it this way too. Both of them. The fact that it spins like that, let's get this nut off. I guess we should get a plastic bag out for some of this hardware. So we'll get this nut off. I'll show you what's wrong with this. I believe these later models, 77 and later, is where the peg hooks here instead of like it should on the frame. I don't happen to like pegs attached to the motor. You can feel the vibrations and stuff. But take it out. And then on this can, you see there's a pin right here. Now, depends how hard that is. I doubt you could drill it out and, you know, hammer, hammer in a little piece of drill or whatever fixes it. But that pin is supposed to pick up this little hole right here. So that's an issue. Let's take our transmission uh, drain plug, put it at the baggie. This uh, shift lever, it's missing you know, some stuff. Like I said, you keep a, keep a piece of paper. You can jot down shift lever, all that. This is going to go for a different project, so we don't have to worry too much about it. Let me think. This, well, it, it's loose, so it's going to come off, but I wanted to show you if I could, in my re, rearranged toolbox that I've, uh, here it is. Is it here? Yes. Sometimes these are really hard. Of all the things, this, um, it's for battery posts. You know, the old battery posts before they screwed on, they're, you know, like the normal post. This goes on there, and you turn this big thing to close it down. This actually works pretty good getting in here if you have to, to pry this off. Like always, you know, you should avoid using pry bars and things like that. See why I like working by the toolbox? So, I guess this is small enough. We'll put it in the bag. There's only two bolts here. All the others are missing. Uh, another this late model, late model, 70, 1977 redesign, I think primarily is a cost reduction. AMF gave Harley a whole bunch of money and they did what they do with money, which is make a lot of mistakes. There's a clutch adjustment down here. It's a 9 16th. As well as the, the stud here that goes up and adjusts this thing on the clutch. Well, I said it was a 9 16th. Wrong. Wrong again. How about a half inch? Because it can't be much different. Yeah, all right. So this thing, and almost to the point of taking it out. The less uh, 
the less it protrudes, the less stuff hangs. So let's do that. Let's just take it completely out because it's a distinctive thing. You'll recognize it, right? When you see this, uh, this adjuster, there's the hex head uh, that you can loosen it with. Am I just tightening this? Okay, there goes that. And screwdrivers. Where did my screwdrivers end up? Here. I should have mentioned that other show on, on uh, the gear case cover. This isn't a, don't use a regular Phillips. Get the right one. This is a number three. It's a little bit bigger. It fits these Philister with an F Philister head uh, screws. Same thing here. They're different lengths. So you got to be careful. Hacks take a long one and drive it in here and screw things up. But I actually took a while putting lock washers under here. And that worked out pretty good. This is just a uh, fill hole, which I notice is loose, but we'll leave it. Let's leave this one in. That's when you fill the oil through, uh, through this right here. For these, since we're live at five and film at 11, there are special tools you can use. What I've always found is a, a half inch wrench fits there pretty good. And you can get these guys loosened out. This is where you adjust the clutch, which is a joy in itself. So that'll be a different show to show that grief. It's missing the clutch cable, and I had one laying around out here. That's why I think I've been inside here and stole some parts to work on my aftermarket motor redesign. Let's see if these are pretty torn up. And I've sold some of these. You'd think I would have saved the good ones. So I figure this is where you add oil. I wonder if this has a vent. Yeah, there's a little vent right here because these plugs aren't vented. Put this back. You know me. And this. Usually when it won't come much further than this, it's something with that chain, chain adjuster hanging. But it comes eventually. You can imagine what joy with a gasket, right? The secret with these big floopy gaskets is you get some lithium grease. Don't use Permatex. You know, just lithium grease on, on nice, clean gasket surfaces. Kind of stick it down here. Or you can maybe hold it, putting through and hanging it. But if it's going to be this tough coming off, it may be this tough coming on. Sometimes you can, oh yeah, there you go. You can reach underneath it and pry a chain adjuster. Well... Oh, the, more bad engineering. Or I've done something wrong. This is the chain adjuster. Can you see it? It's this spring and this lumpy thing. Here's the clutch adjustment mechanism. Clutch cable comes down. I want to put this over in our bin, being careful not to nick things up. So, oh, what a miserable design. I, I guess... I think my 79 has the old fashioned one where there's not this big spring here. And what the spring does is it pushes down, right? That's what, that's what you want to do. So that you don't want harmonics forming in this, right? Especially with a lumpy two cylinder motor, thump, thump. Uh, you don't want the chain getting into, you know, harmonics. So you, you can't have a spring loaded tensioner. You can't on camshafts either. So instead what you do is you have the spring pushing down so this thing just doesn't flop around as the chain flops around. And you can see, you know, and, and don't tighten this too tight, right? There's a spec in the book, get that service book, I think like that. What I used to do is have it so loose that I could, like here, see, it, it would grind here, it would grind here. So I'd kind of feel up and say, well, I, I want it pretty loose. The tricky thing is, is all this stuff is so sloppily made as you turn it, it'll be tightened and loosened because the sprockets aren't machined perfectly centered, right? So here's the, sh the shifter shaft. Well, isn't this some, oh, okay, that could explain what's going on. Maybe no springs in here. That's why I could turn that and, you know, this part wasn't turning. But I'm glad to see the parts are here. So far, so good, let's, 
I think this just pulls out. Could be, could be force. I don't know. See, anytime stuff is this miserable, it's not what I consider a viable design. There we go. So I can see what's going on is the uh, the other part of this spring is digging in to the case and keeping this from pulling out. Like I say, I don't edit stuff. If I'm having misery with it, you'll have misery. I wonder if we can get a tool. This one, maybe this one. Can we get a tool back here to pull on that? There we go. And you see, once the pressure comes off, then it all flops. And there's different kinds of these springs. They don't exist at all in, in 76 and earlier, right? 77, I thought they, they kept the older setup. But then here they've gone. This is actually nicer than the one that used to bolt here. Uh, and then all this spring business, right? They changed it a little bit as they perfected it. What shall we do? I guess, you know, if it fits in the bag, of course, this would be all oily. You might not want to mix it in. Let's just kind of keep stuff straight. Okay, so that's the outside bag. Moving right along. Let's get another bag. I'm going to run out of bags pretty soon. I have plenty more in the kitchen. These are the one prevailing torque nuts that I leave, right? I don't like these nylock prevailing torque is what we called them when I was in the auto business. Because they don't free run, right? You loosen them and then you got every turn, like even now, right? Look, it won't come out. So, 7 sixteenths. Oh, miserable. And let's see if it's missing the plates. It might just have the springs missing. That might have been what I did to... Uh, but it won't explain why the thing was so miserable to shift. That's going to be another, another joy. So, come here. I think I'll get the primary out today. We'll do the transmission next show. I don't like these being too long. I'm sure you don't like being too long either. And yeah, I've, I've, yeah I can hook my electric drill and go zing, zing, zing. It's always better to me to feel things. Well, I guess we don't need our little tray anymore. And thank gosh this was empty. Okay. So it's empty. So let's start getting ready. Clean this up. How are we doing? Are you filming? Yeah, filming everywhere. So now we can take the pressure plate off, hopefully. Okay, yeah, no spring, also no nut here, so that's missing. But thankfully the hub and the plates and all that is, so we'll be able to go through that. The big design defect here is they've got two coil springs, and you know, I'll go find one next show, I can show you that stuff. And that you need this big uh, puller. I wonder if I've got it handy. Gosh, I wonder where it would be. There, there's a special tool that you screw from here to here, and it pushes in on the uh on this thing so you can get these bolts started right it's not like the old dry clutch which is a superior clutch in my book uh so these two springs you know the early stuff the dry clutch it has separate springs six of them right when you think about it that kind of inherently balances the force as long as none of the springs are broke it it when once you set up the little nuts it's an even force all the way around these big coils that they put on in, uh, God, when did they go to the wet clutch? 70, 71? These big coils, well, where does a coil start? Where does a coil end? And so when, when you, and, and this is the other bad thing, you can't watch the clutch work with the, without having the primary cover on in these late models. But if you do have that tool, you can notice if you press here, sometimes it can'ts. I had a buddy buy you know, aftermarket, instead of two springs, it's better, it's thicker than one spring, and that's worse. The reason they bothered to make two springs is so you could kind of rotate them relative to one another, so that the start of one is different than the start of the other, and that keeps this plate. 
uh, Roger Ramjet, a uh, buddy in California, makes this thing called a tamer, which just locates, you know, it keeps the plate from fooling around by putting a, a pin here from the primary cover side to keep it. I wonder why nobody's bothered to make a little six pack uh, bunch of springs, right? You could, you could set it up that way. You don't even need the studs. You could just make a little carrier to hold the springs. But here you are. Next thing, we'll get a screwdriver, nice little straight slot. This should work. There's a wire. Oh, you might, how do you want it? These are the spacers. The first couple of years, they actually adjusted it. Then they got smart and said, well, there's so little material in a wet clutch to wear off. You can just use these fixed spacers. And so you're just reefing down on those with this plate, right? Against the big spring pressure. I'll stop filming in a while. I'll go dig all this stuff up, the tool. Where is the end of this thing? There it is. So you get this off. Let's put that in the primary cover. Let me think. I guess you, with that off, you can get the clutch pack out. I think this clutch pack is right. This big heavy thing, and it is a friction, right? It's got friction here. Then the steels. I think these, yeah. They, they started doing stuff to help get the oil out of these steels. So there's a factory set. Oops, I'm dropping the, uh, the spacers. You want to, you know, you want to separate this and clean it all and get it all dialed in. Now, before you can get this off, you got to get the hub off. It's missing the nut. I'll have to go dig out one of those. I've probably got some somewhere. And then this is a bit of a joy. The, the methods I've developed. <laughs> I've got a slide hammer up here that sometimes you can stick it just underneath. It just fits. And you can go like this. And you just go on opposite sides. Not a lot, right? It's coming. If you go too hard, you're gonna you know break something back here. That's so this is my quick and dirty. There we go. That's the slide hammer way, the the correct way to do it, probably special tool such and such. God, I wish I could remember where I put all my stuff here is is this it this might be it i made a tool that's not hard to do let's see if these line up they do so i think my, my theory was put this here and then i've got different length bolts here and those bolts go these there are threaded holes here to help you with this you don't go I don't think it's smart to thread through and just push against the drum because then you're pushing across this bearing. Since this is stuck on the shaft, you want to react against the shaft against this. So bolts in, where are you? Bolts in those holes, this thing lined up. So that's the cool guy. This might also work on the other side, on the transmission sprocket. I, I rigged up a homebrew puller for that. Let me see, is this it? Nope. Got some news in my drawer of special Harley tools. Here's a, uh, let me see. Okay, this is a homemade for the dry clutch where you screw a steel and a friction, except it's a wet friction. And it's, uh, this is the wet clutch where you can put this in here and being screwed together, except it won't go. Being screwed together, it, uh, it, it, it allows you to, tighten stuff, do stuff. Then the other special tool, which with an impact, you really don't need it. There's this thing, homebrewed. They sell it as a special tool, though. You can get it, cool guy. And I think it even works in this. It certainly works on the early models where you use this to freeze these two so you can you know, use a regular torque wrench, which would be the smart way to do it. I've always cheaped out and just used an impact. That, uh, is this thing, oh, this finger tight. So I don't have to get my DeWalt impact. 
let's get this. Okay, be careful, big heavy piece of iron, right? Don't clank that down on top of the primary cover and start denting it up. You can see the same idiot that glued the gasket to the gear case cover, cam cover, glued this gasket here. Don't do that. All that silicone glue that falls in here gets in the roller bearings and you're screwed. So let's get this uh, front one out. Let's get the clutch by the clutch. The other thing is when you use the primary cover like, like a, a, a pan, like I'm doing, you can scratch the, the nice, the outside part of it. So that's also another reason to be careful. And this just usually slips on. Yeah, see how that moves? It's got the right gear. It's got the starter gear dialed in. One of the horrors, you got to take all of this apart, drain the oil to get to these two bolts to take the starter off, which we'll do maybe another show. Okay, we're lucky. This one is... Now, like I say, I hung around Duncan Keller's shop, and he's a very good mechanic. Goes to Bonneville. I think he's still wrenching. This was the one place he used... Loctite, blue, don't use red, you'll need a torch. Uh, he used a little blue Loctite here, but you can see the cover. Uh, see this little pin here? The theory here is if this starts coming out, it's gonna hit this pin right here and won't be able to completely back out and fall apart and cause you all kinds of grief. So now with this one loose and this one loose, the whole thing should come. And I better get, let's put the primary cover here and we'll get this. The chain hardly ever wears out. And get that there. All this will go through, I <laughs> see, found another. All this will go to that kerosene stuff, that uh, safety clean type of uh, cleaner. It doesn't, you don't need the, what do you call it, carburetor cleaner for this. It's too aggressive, it's too hard on, always wear. I bought Amazon gloves out to here for dealing with that carb cleaner. I got some on my wrist once. You don't want that feeling. Look at this bad, uh, leaving a 7 16 wrench out. Okay, work out of the box. Other stuff missing, there's four bolts that go here. This is the other place, there's no lock washers called out. I don't, you know, that's just the way the factory, ever since the 50s, late 50s, they started to put, put the trap door in. Uh, this is where I use blue Loctite. Because I, had had, I did have one back out a little and start scraping the back of the drum. There's this spacer here, because it's no more kickstart, right? This is where the kickstart gear used to slide and all that. You can't do that on this model, because there's not even a boss here. So... This is easy money, and I guess if we... Ah, you watched me tighten that the other day. Now you get to watch me loosen it. If I can... If I have the strength... How about that? So we'll get the... Uh, Whatchamer call it? The uh, transmission nut. Transmission sprocket nut. Put that, I guess, here. Okay. And we'll put this back. Now. Oh, we got this. Here's that. And the hammer that I've beaten to death this show. Usually you can go like this and just tap. It doesn't take a lot. Remember, you're, you're whacking like, it's not really a thrust bearing, like a needle bearing, but you're, you're pushing off of these dowels, this dowel here and this dowel here. So let's get this out. And there we go. It's dry. This has been, that's why it was having so much trouble shifting, because I put this together dry, you know, just as a placeholder to keep track of what's what. So that would explain that. It looks, I did that transmission show to talk about, you know, it's in neutral now. Is it? Can I hold? You know, if you can hold this and turn this, oh, it's not neutral. It's in first because this is closed up. I don't know if I can. There. Now that moved this apart. Can you see? And so now it's in neutral. 
So let's get this out of here. Carefully put this. Like I say, I've never used a dishwasher for any of this stuff, but here's the uh, shifter shaft. Don't forget, you got to put this in. Uh, sometimes you can roll them on something flat, right? And see, you know, when, when you drop the bike, and if you drive enough, you're going to drop it sooner or later. Uh, it, it can bend this. And then what's worse is when you pull it off, it screws up the little seal that's in the uh, primary cover. So that's that. Should we uh, pull the starter off? Huh? Is it? Uh... No, let's do that later. I want to make shorter shows. I don't want to bore you to death. So I can see the, uh, there's some entertain. Oh, I see. These are backed out here so that my homemade stand works, right? Here's some of the bolts you got to pull. These dowels look good. Feel here, you know, you, you might want to bump if, if these are pulled out because some animal reefed on them. Make sure. See, there's some bumps here. This should, this is, should be like machine flat. This is pulled a little. Then in here, where's our uh, bag? Okay. Ah, it's missing the rollers. There's a bunch of rollers. You can buy them oversized, undersized. And I used to have the hardest time. What I used to do, thinking I was, you know, old school. Got this washer goes against a snap ring that's snapped in there. So the deal would be you put this big snap ring in here where you see my finger wiggling and it's kind of a pain in the butt. We'll try to take it out, hopefully without hurting ourselves. Let's, uh, let's do that just so we keep stuff together. So good opportunity with that snap ring, trust me, to get safety glasses on and a pretty big, if I remember right, maybe this screwdriver. Let's walk around and see if we can't get that thing around. Get that thing out. Oh, we're not going to get it out without getting the getting the uh, seal off, are we? So we're going to come over here and oh, animals do this to each other. Why would people do this? Okay, so you don't gall the thing out. What you do is you find either this or this. I'll show you on this camera. This is the old Craftsman number 4119, made in USA, Craftsman. It's got a little thing here you flip back and forth, and it's actually a ratchet. This one is just more just a straight bent bar. Hopefully with one of these, oh, I should have kept the screwdriver. Let's try just a straight bar. There, crack. <clears throat> Cr oh, it doesn't crack, but at least it turned. Good. Done with this. Back in the box. Get the number. This is a number two Phillips. As a matter of fact, now I can stand off to the side and you can watch it. This guy. Where's our, uh, somewhere we've got an empty baggie, I thought, still working on it. Maybe not. And this guy was, let's see. See, and you can note in your notes, hey, this one was tough coming out. It's got a little lock washer, which I think, I think that's factory, actually. And then, see, I can see a drip here, so maybe they glued this one down, which means you ruin it. And you've got to buy a new one because there's no way to get it out without bending it. So you can't reuse the seal even though it looks good as new. Oh, I get so upset. Don't glue your bike together. Yeah, it's glued in. The, a common place, they, leak, they don't leak here, right? This little paper thing, it's fantastic. Just like the old oil pump gaskets here. They just don't leak there. I'm sorry. Paper thin gaskets work great on nice surfaces. And to the, surprisingly, it works on this little tin where so it, it will weep a little through this counter shaft bearing. Some, 
I'm not sure if it was the factory. I had one of these holes drilled all the way through. I used too long a bolt. It went into the first gear, and when I kicked the bike over, it snapped that little piece off, which laid in the bottom for about a half a year. Next time I figured out that little problem. And so you could put a little silicone in this bore and push the bearing in, but don't push it so the silicone gets pushed in, right? In other words, like put a little bead, a little tiniest bit of silicone on the outside of the countershaft bearing, tap it in from this way so the silicone is being peeled away from the inside of the transmission. Then here it'll come in the main shaft of, of the uh, transmission. And so that same thing, you don't glom a bunch of silicone. You just very strategically put a little on the sprocket. So when the sprocket goes in, it'll seal here fine. It's, it's just the splines. You need just a touch of silicone. Same principle, so that as it goes in, it's not pushing silicone in. It's wiping silicone out of the sprocket, like put a little on the sprocket, and as you push it in, it pushes that out. And if you want, you can touch it up a little. So let's see if we still got one of these. Yeah. And let's see if I can remember. I think putty knives are filed with clamps. And where is my clamps in? Not any of these. Oh, I know That's where I just was. So a normal putty knife, 40 years old, and a snap-on gasket scraper. Not too sharp. If they're too sharp, they start cutting. You know, you can get one of those straight razor things. Let's see if we can save this. I doubt it. Oh, jeez. There we go. Well, we almost saved it. So this might be a thing if you can... See, it's so hard to get this uh, seal. Let me go around and show... Well, no. Uh, we, let's do what we came to do. We got that off successfully. Here's this snap ring. You can kind of put, put this in here. This is a danger, Will Robinson moment. I see no matter where you put it, it's in the way. Ah, let's try this way. So, like I say, I don't edit this stuff. It's been a while since I've been this deep. Oops. Well, I just rotated it. I didn't really. There we go. Now it's starting to come out. Turn. I'm trying to remember if there was one particular length. There we go. So you, know, you got to kind of pull it in from this tip, get it, and then once you get it started like this, and here's where it'll spring and go into your eyes, get it about this far, make sure it's not going too far out of, let me turn the other way. Bink, it even, it even wrapped me a little bit. So, okay, so we got parts, tools, try to keep them separate, gasket scraper, putty knife, new toolbox set up and we had our what's this guy okay this has got the other part so that's one thing you forget the uh, this little flat washer can you see it here this little flat washer that goes against this so then the bearings can walk in and hit here you skate the bearings you blow up you blow up your engine you blow up the tranny actually so that's that Tranny is for the most part out. We'll, we'll pop this off as a fun thing next time we start splitting the case. I kind of think of the starters being part of the case assembly. So we'll get the, we'll get the cases split and get the flywheel out. I'm not going to do anything to the flywheel. Matter of fact, I had a, a bad, what was it? This was loose and it just was worn out. I ended up just buying a flywheel assembly. I don't know if custom chrome or V-twin. Uh, somebody makes it, yeah, here's the whole flywheel assembly, true, you know, all ready to go, just put it in, and the old one you can sell on eBay to a motor shop. But I'm glad this is dry. 
Uh, oh, uh, the big trick, the big trick. Dr. Dick, who's this genius uh, Harley fellow, sportster especially, came out in sportster. All these years, what I used to do is get that white lithium grease, right? And I glom the lithium grease on this tranny bearing, and then I'd take the rollers, and I'd stick the rollers in, and I'd first just the separate main shaft, right? Come on, baby. Ah. Just with the main shaft, you know, okay, is the roller the right size? Is it too loose? Then they make bigger rollers to tighten it up. Usually it's, if you can fit the full, what is it, 23 or 21? If you can fit them in there, they're the right size. And you go smaller or bigger just so you get, you know, you, you shouldn't leave a gap. Although I've done it and got away with it. You shouldn't. So, and then I, I did make sure I had the right size bearings, get them in there all greased up. Then carefully, like a magician, you know, lead this string. You, if you hit the bearings with this, you can drop them down. Uh, whole mi misery. Dr. Dick says, no, that's not the way you do it. On any of the, uh, the old 1950s, stick the tranny in without the bearing. Then come in from this side, pack it, stick the bearings in, or maybe size it first, like, you know, I was talking about. But once you're sure you got the right rollers, just put them in from this side. A little lithium grease if you want, a little 60 weight, whatever. Then put in that flat washer, then, then put in the snap ring, then put in the seal. Brilliant, brilliant. So that makes sure that you don't have a, a roller bearing or two laying in the bottom because you weren't careful enough sliding the, the transmission in. So I think we're gonna call it quits. We got it pretty far apart, you can see it in pretty decent shape. I don't see any structural damage, no what they call zippers where the case has been re-welded or anything. Can't put a Kickstarter in an 82. It's got a dash 81 part number here on the case. So that was probably for 82. Here's some numbers too. So Sports of Paul here. Got the primary apart. We'll get some odds and ends and anything I forget because every time I watch this show and I edit it, I, oh, I should have said that. I should have reminded about that. So I'll probably have some more commentary. Maybe the springs to show you how to get that clutch together. And uh, maybe I'll start washing the stuff off and showing you that stuff, okay? Meanwhile, have fun with your Sportster project. Catch you folks next time. Bye now.